I gotta tell you, I opened up the skin of body filler and memories just keep come flashing back. Okay, not a product plug. This is just a intro explanation. If you don't understand where this is going or where it came from, go back and see parts one and two of this series. Uh, it's a carbon fiber intake build. Uh, we're building the mold right now, forming the mold, and it will turn into the carbon fiber build of the intake. When I smell paint or this body filler, and it reminds me when I did that. So as I had discussed in part two, I'm going to be using body filler to kind of fill in the imperfections of smooth out the mold and also fill in those voids that were created by the contact cement eating away at that foam material. So that's what I'm going to be doing here and I'll show you as I progress along with it. I'm not going to do a lot to begin with. <clears throat> Stuff to do on the truck. I've got those holes that I've got to fill up to the top. I came over here, it was probably 20 to 30 minutes afterwards and it was dry. Still a little tacky, was a little tacky at the top, but um, dry enough to sand. I gotta get a sanding block. Actually, it'd be better if it was a board, a longer board. Um, I guess, yeah, because of the length of this thing, I could probably get away with just a sanding block, not a long board. So I just finished applying another coat of um, body filler on this. Just to, uh, this coat kind of tried to uh, fill up that transition in between the round and um, yeah, where, where the round uh, things attach to it. Um, I also filled in, there were some porous spots of the material in here, and I kind of filled that in, um, filled in some other spots. Now, 
this will not be the last coat. Um, I, I did that bottom panel too, just so that I could get it uh, straightened out. Um, just put a kind of a skim coat on it, just so that I could get it straightened out and see if there's gonna be any low spots in that. Um, at some point in time, I'm going to have to figure out exactly where I am dimension-wise so that I can um, work it so that it's dimensionally correct all the way across. And I will do that using the body filler, but um, there it is. I'll bring you back after. I, I won't show you sanding it. Um, I'll bring you back afterwards to take a look at it. Let me just wait for the camera to light shift. Okay, over here, I'm getting close to um, being having this thing done as far as filling in the voids and stuff like that. It still needs a little work, a little tweaking here and there, a little sanding, but it's getting close, real close. One of the things that I've got to start thinking about now is <clears throat> I've got to form that flange on the bottom of it and the flange is going to be a little contoured. Now these recesses into the into the uh, cover plate for the plenum are where the injectors go down through in the cylinder. So you got to leave these recesses in there. So in case you have to pull the injectors out, you wouldn't be able to get the injectors out without removing the cover plate or the intake manifold, let's call it. You wouldn't be able to get the injectors out without removing it if they were straight across. Now the other thing that the, it's there for, and I mean that wouldn't be a big item, I mean m removing the intake manifold if you have to pull an injector isn't a big deal, but the other issue is that is where the um, fuel line goes down to feed the injector. So let's say that the recesses have to stay in there. What I have to do, I'm kind of resigned to the fact that I'm going to use a piece of Lexan, uh, Lexan plastic and mount this onto it so that I can pick it up. But around that, when I say pick it up, I will tack it down to that Lexan so that I can form it around there so that the flange I can peel it off the Lexan without having an issue with it but somehow I've got to form kind of the dam let's call it a dam to put the build the flange inside of and set this into it <clears throat> so somehow I've got to temporarily tack that onto the Lexan <clears throat> and then around it is going to be a, let's call it a dam to form the flange of the intake manifold <clears throat> I'm thinking I might build it out of Lexan and I would just have to smooth out the edges and put a, a good release agent on it so when I take it apart I can release that from the carbon fiber um, part <clears throat> so I can get the carbon fiber part out of that off of that Lexan and out of side of that what I'm calling a dam that's going to dam up to build this the flange but that's just one of the issues that's going on right now um, Lexan isn't a hard thing to get I can get it at a box store you know uh, 
Lowe's, Home Depot, something like that. Um, whether I can <coughs> cut that Lexan smooth enough to create that dam effect is the other thing. Uh, but let me try it. Uh, worst case comes to worst, I might be able to take a router and uh, use a router to uh, cut it. Okay, I'm over here at the table where I'm making the mold for the carbon fiber thing. And yesterday I had to go out and uh, do a bunch of things. But one of the things that I was looking for to get the, the carbon fiber that I'm going to be using for this thing, I'm a proponent of trying to buy things locally, you know, uh, help local uh, brick and mortar type uh, businesses. You know, I mean, everybody buys stuff off the internet. I, I understand that and I understand why they do it uh, because it's so much cheaper and uh, so much easier. You don't have to actually physically drive someplace to find stuff out or uh, the the other big thing that I kind of understand and is becoming a huge determining factor in in the way people I think the way people uh, shop is you go into a store now and ask somebody something and they are like clueless um, it's like um, that movie Clueless or Dumb and Dumber. I mean, you get people that wait on you that y you have no idea of how the hell they ever got hired. But anyways, let me get off that. Um, I w went to a store, I called them up and they said, yeah, I called them up first and they said, no, we, we can't get it. And I hung up with them and a minute later, the guy called me back and he says, wait a minute, let me take that back. I can get carbon fiber. Um, so and I had to do a bunch of running around. So what I did was I wanted to check the weight of it or the strength of the carbon fiber that I was going to use. Carbon fiber comes in different strength ratings. It comes in different weave patterns, but it also comes in different strength weighting or ratings. Um, and that strength rating is based on the thickness, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the way it is, and I'll explain to you how I know that. Um, not that I know anything about carbon fiber, really, but in, in reading a couple of vendors, online vendors' um, descriptions of the material, the rating, um, and there's like 1.6K or 3K or 6K, and that stands for the thousand pounds of uh, strength rating of it. And in reading some of the uh, suppliers' uh, literature on the different ones, they say the 1.6K is easier to wrap around um, th around molds because of uh, the strength rating of it or which would be the size. The thicker the material, the harder it is to wrap probably. So that's how I uh, understood that the thickness of the material is a direct correlation to that K rating of the, the strength of the material. But again, I regress. I went down there and um, he, he started looking it up and he says, oh, I, I gotta tell you, I made a mistake. He says, this is a, a welding blanket that's made out of carbon fiber. It's not carbon fiber material that you're looking for to build something with. And he showed it to me on his computer screen and it was, it was a carbon fiber welding blanket. Um, but while I was down there, one of the things that I had been asking, and I may have told people this in other videos, but a long time ago, a very long time ago, before I got into the 
fire protection business. I was uh, worked in the auto body industry. And um, one of the things that I had talked to a body guy about, I, I've got a body shop down the street from my shop, and, and I talked to this guy. This guy comes up here and borrows stuff off of me sometimes, or I go down and pick his brain about things, about because there's sure a hell of a lot of difference between when I was in the body business uh, 50 years ago and what there is today. But anyways, I had asked him previously, I says, listen, you know, we used to use lead sometimes to fill joists. He says, well, they don't do that anymore. Well, he says, actually, some car restoration, restoration shops are getting back into doing that to kind of make authentic uh, restorations on older cars. But he's, I said to him, you know, there was like this spot glazing stuff that we used to use in a tube um, where you had little imperfections um, like dings in the existing paint you didn't want to sand out or like little pits in, in the uh, uh, filler that you were using, body filler, uh, kind of probably more like that. Um, I, I says that, you know, we used to use it, you would prime it and then you could just spread this stuff over uh, afterwards over the primer after you had sanded it off and it would kind of fill it in. And what it was like was a kind of a real thick primer that came in a tube. And he says, yeah, I, I think I remember that stuff, but I don't think they make it anymore. He says they kind of make this uh, newer stuff now that it's, it's kind of like a two-part epoxy and um, you have to mix it up and spread that on. And I'm thinking, yeah, I don't want to get involved in that. So I, I started asking these guys in this auto supply store about that. And again, this auto supply store is kind of unlike the other ones. I mean, they kind of specialize in providing body... Uh, working materials. I mean, they have car parts, and don't get me wrong, probably that's their primary business, but they do do a lot of auto body um, material providing. And I asked a guy about that, and he says, yeah, we they still make that putty, and he gave it to me, and sure enough, I'll, I'll open it up, and it is the exact same stuff. It's red, and uh, we used to kind of use that red primer um, and this is exactly it's got the same smell and every everything yeah yeah it's got that same smell um, it's kind of ironic how that smell brings you back to uh, the past and me working in body shops and doing all this stuff but anyways um, he had it. He had that newer stuff, that two-part stuff, but, you know, he, I told him what I was using it for and that the thing was foam, and he says, well, that two-part stuff really heats up. He says it gets real hot, and he says it might not be working good on foam because it could uh, melt the foam, which is a good point. I think that that's actually what happened in where those voids were. But anyways, I picked this up to fill in them little dings and spots and stuff. And um, they did, again, did not have the carbon fiber. So I'm probably going to have to go online to get it. And like I talked about in other videos, I think I'm going to use Lexan, Lexan to uh, uh, provide the base and to provide that uh, ring that goes around it. Um, in the shape of the outside of this to so that I can make the flange that attaches to the bottom of that and when I say attaches to it it's not going to be attached in a separate process it's all going to be part of the carbon fiber build of this whole thing so 
the carbon fiber will actually go down into that flange. The flange will be multi layers of carbon fiber, but the carbon fiber layers that wrap around the mold will go down into the flange area to provide uh, strength in between the flange and uh, the main part of the intake body itself. One of the things that I did yesterday afternoon, um, it was kind of my first day back in the shop after that road trip, that long road trip. Um, I tried that glaze out. It's that body uh, spot glazing putty. Um, we used to use this a long time ago in the body industry. And it's just for filling in little divots, um, imperfections in the body filler or in the paint. Um, even like areas where if you're working on body work um, and, and the paint didn't get tapered out enough in sanding, it could, that glazing can be used to, to kind of fill in that imperfection. Anyways, I'm not going to bore you with this whole thing, but that's how it's used, and I will continue on. I still got to form this out. I might even want to add a little more to this, um, which is a four inch intake to it, where the four inch uh, silken boot will be uh, attached to it. So, I also on that thing, whether it's here or on the addition, you've got to try and create a little ridge so when you uh, clamp that silicone boot on, it doesn't pull off past it. But I'll bring you back to it. One of the things that I want to do is create a curve down here so that it kind of rolls in to the so w when you form the carbon fiber in there, there's a roll to it that kind of comes down into this. Now, it can't be too big, again, because of those bolts that have to go in there. But I want it in there so that the air kind of flows around the curve into it. One of the things that I don't know, having never done this before, is how to kind of form that. Now, what I'm going to do is just use it body filler out of this. If I was ever to do this again, I probably might try and come up with some other way of doing it, but what I'm going to do right now is use body filler and just kind of create a, a curve, a small curve in there. But I, I really didn't know how to kind of form it, so what I got is a piece of old garden hose, and um, what I'm going to try and do is put the body filler in there and use this to kind of uh, form it and smooth it out. But anyways, I'll bring you back and show it to you as I do it. So there it is. Now, what I kind of learned was the trick is to kind of keep working it like you would concrete, uh, finishing it. As the body filler got a little harder, it was easier to smooth it out and get a better transition in it. What happened is it kept damming up like this on the sides, except pretty thick, and I would have to go back through with a putty knife and try and scrape it off, but that would leave a big ridge in there. What I kind of found is that if you keep working it with the forming tool, which is a hose, um, as it hardens up, the transition kept getting smoother and smoother. So just a little lesson learned there. So here we are over to the mold for the carbon fiber intake. Um, 
as I described in the last video, I, I'm putting that stuff in here to make a curved section on the bottom uh, where it transitions from the intake into the runner that goes into um, the head or the air plenum of the head. Um, on the next one, this will probably be it for this chapter. On the next one, uh, you'll see it finished off. I'm going to continue to use the putty to um, fill in any little divots or any imperfections in the mold. I'm also going to add the uh, another uh, section of the round intake coming into it um, and try and uh, fabricate out a ridge in it that will hold the uh, silicone boot over it. But anyways, um, that's going to be it for this video. Probably going to, the next one is, uh, I'll show you the Luxan one after I get it to that I will uh, use to um, fabricate the dam and uh, the bottom plate of it that will uh, hold it in, hold it in place while I uh, do the carbon fiber. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe.